So hey guys, I'm Redwin, Stark Dadful, and we're going to show you some of our favorite magpeds that we've ever tried, and these are the ones that we chose, this has our own. Mine is the Carmatech SAR-12 here, and uh, can already gain a frame. It's the chassis, before he forgets to mention it. Yep. And the die is Salt Matrix. We're just going to call it the dam like everybody else. It's quicker. Um, well, for this, we're just going to kind of take you through some of the features of each. We'll make some our favorites. It's most full. Yeah, we're going to do overview of, of the markers. Not too in depth, but just kind of general. So we'll start with the start. Well, the die dam. Mm -hmm. I don't even know this stuff, I don't even have it installed. Well, well it comes with the Die Ultra Barrel, and I believe 689 board. It's the, for those of you that don't know, it's a two piece barrel. Well, it's a very good barrel, so I just don't have it installed right now. In the SAR 12, it comes with this one is a 20 inch barrel. Barrel? Oh, made by Hammerhead 4 Hammertech. It's rifled, which makes it optimal for first strike rounds, and so far it works really well. So moving balls. on to the shroud, hangar, whichever terminology you prefer. The hangar on the diadem is modular, not in the form of the you know, Picatinny rails, but in the fact that you can buy sections of a shroud to extend or decrease the overall length. Simply attached to the upper receiver by a screw up here and a screw down here. There's nothing too fancy about it. Hit the rail little sections that are on side and bottom are metal. However, the top, the rest of the shroud is plastic. So, well, Primatex makes their own. It's an aluminum one and much. It accepts Maple MOE rails. They send you one for your bipod, and it's attached by these two screws here. Uh, really, it's just a basic, simple rail. For so we'll go over the lower receiver here now. So the magwell on the dam is plastic, unfortunately, but it's not really a big deal. I think it's. It's perfectly fine. I won't worry about breaking it or anything. And other than that, it's aluminum, which is really nice. It's uh, air through grip, obviously. The battery is stored inside the grip. As you can see, it's toolless to access That's the battery, which is kind of in demand. Sorry, we're going to pop you in the face sooner or later. Here, um, Trigger is just really nice. It's a micro switch, so yeah, yeah. Pretty much it. Oh, yeah, it's a uh, uh, beveled magwell. Not overly, but a little bit. So, and me, yeah. I said and me, say and me magrolies, which is really nice for those of us that like to shoot left-handed or since you have to play both sides of a bunker, now you can do it with either hand. So, that's a good idea. So the SAR-12 lower receiver is pretty much a glass reinforced polymer. It accepts standard AR-15 grips, I believe. It comes with a sliding trigger and MB mag release. It's other than that, it's very basic. It connects pretty much the whole gun and connects straight to that, and that's what it pretty much holds everything together. The upper receiver here on the dam is 100% aluminum. Um, cont it contains the bolt engine, and it is a, a single tube design. It's a spool valve, you know, as which is what die makes. It's all the 
fire control holes, those which are buttons, are integrated into the upper receiver. They're just above the lower, obviously. I would like to have a fire selector switch instead of a button, but it is what it is. It also features, here's the shift on the fly switch. So I put it into hopper mode right now. Now, as you can see, there I have a Phoenix installed. Well, you can also have a cap. Yep. So instead of uh, running a Phoenix, if you're going straight mag bed, you can remove all this, and now you have a cover that sits relatively flush. Sorry, you should have had this ready. Beast thing. That's also aluminum, by the way. Okay. So, yeah. Standard pictini on top. Let's see if I can kind of show you the eye pipe option. Ooh, is this going to be too dark? Let's see if you can get a light in it. Yeah, that might work. Yeah, sort of. There we go. Sort of. Upper? I mean, eh. Yeah. Bank bed? Upper. Bank bed? Upper. It's just a. You know, what they have is an eye pipe. They have the same thing in their speedball markers, and it's just kind of like a rotating. Well, it's the eye pipe. It just rotates. Which that it's really smooth on the field too. I would have liked it if this was a bit bigger, or just because when you're really in a hurry, you can. I was going to say you can miss it, but I kind of just disproved my point. <laughs> right. But, it's nice and low profile if, if that's what they're going for, I assume it is. Well, the SAR-12 either comes in semi-auto or bolt action. It, it is an aluminum. Most of it is open. So obviously it is a bolt action. It, overall, it's very very well done here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It does come with the option to go from breech feed to hopper feed by rotating the barrel here. And it's pretty much basic. It's pretty much similar to a pump. And very similar to a pump overall. Well, oh, as you'll see in our maintenance video, it's coming in part two. And other than that, it's mostly it, actually. It's not nice simple. Unfortunately, it is kind of open. So if you're playing in trenches of dirt, you can get a little bit of dirt in it. It's just along the side that I've noticed. Other than that, it's, that hasn't been it, much of a problem. I don't think it really affected the operation of it, though. No. So, not yet. It's just something to be aware of. So now let's talk about the stock. This is the Die Ultralight stock. It's not the original stock. Mm -hmm. I don't have it here. It's a nice stock. It has a little compartment for you to hold the battery. Maybe a donut, whatever you want to stick in there. Here, um, but at when the original stock is fully extended, you can only fit a 48 cubic inch carbon fiber tank into the ASA. Whereas with the Ultralay stock, when fully extended, you can fit a 68 cubic inch. So if uh, I forget my re remote line or if something happens to my remote line, I don't care. I'll just throw my tank right on the marker and now I'm good to go. Well, although I do you like the ultralight stock because it is noticeably lighter and well I wanted to light me up so if you guys are familiar with I was going to say if you guys are familiar with AR-15s so you'll know what I mean but let's face it you don't want to be carrying around 20 pounds of marker or if you don't have to so this was a nice little upgrade so the SAR-12 chassis the Regular one is a little bit different. This one is based heavily off the Shytac. So 
rubber butt pad here. <laughs> Nothing overly special about that. And then uh, it's a plastic cheek comb yeah, or cheek rest, and uh, some metal rods to adjust it. If you are, and it comes with a gorilla or 13 cube gauge tank. If you are running a tank like here, here you have the far, or this just out option. The rest of them aren't an option. You have six other positions. So the only way you can use them, it really is if you run a remote line, which I've seen done. It's comfy at full extension though. For me at least. I don't know if they were going for a shake hack, but that's how it kind of turned out, so. But you really just kinda... need a anchor right here. Yeah, so. I like the look of the shake hack though, so. I think that turned out. So a 6x6 six six stack is not a traditional spring. They use their, more of their own, and it's a little, detent can be a little in a miss. You want to make sure you're smooth when you're loading it in, or else it might have first strike rounds all over the place. That was just the heaven view, or? With paintballs. Okay. <laughs> um, got a little bit. So, the durability on them seems to be pretty good, too. So far... I feel not too bad. We haven't really gotten tested. I wouldn't want to throw this on the ground or anything. Yes. Yeah, so. They they do cost a lot, but it's a specialized item. So. Uh, and the diamonds. I actually like these things. They're durable, so I've when I've dropped them, thrown them. I really don't care. Here it's they're going to survive. If they're made with what they call tough molding, so I need drove over them. Hmm? I need drove over some. Oh yeah, that's true actually. That Did they survive? Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. those were the 12 rounds. And so the <laughs> previous owner to my dad, he drove over some of the, his 12 round mags. And yeah, I have them and they work great. So, that's saying something. Good job, die. Hey, um, as I just mentioned they are, are available in uh, 10 round, but it's uh, actually 12 rounds, so 10. Actually, gotta get that more or on there. And this is the 20 rounds. This is more what people use more commonly. So, so it's also called, uh, uh, kind of a D mag, so it's 10 on each side. Uh, there's kind of a comparison in terms of sizing, as you can see. It's actually pretty big for a, it's pretty big mag you know, for a 12 round, but this is just really tall. Um, a cool thing about these is the. Can you kind of get more light on this? Too much light. I can't actually see. I'm kind of blinded by the lights. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a. That's what most people call a garage door. Or so it's. Once you have compressed the spring, then you have a little door that you can close. <laughs> what else can in this in? Does a pretty good job of keeping dirt sand out. Paint, I guess. I was crawling through the mud at the last game and no issues there. Did you come in your gun? When did you just stick them back into the in that when you saw them full mud? No. I would. I was crawling through the mud, they were bound to get mud on them. So I kind of, kind of just wipe them off and... It, it was kind of hard because my glove was so full of mud, but... You scraped it. Yeah, kind of like... Minimize the amount. <laughs> we'll put it that way. Um... Yeah. Oh, no. Forgot to mention, as you'll see in the uh, video oh, or part two, it you need screwdrivers to just one screwdriver or to fully disassemble the Megan app. I hope, yeah, mm -hmm. his due. But to access yes, the feed tube, I'm not sure what to call it. And you simply have to. Slide the bottom. It's all toolless, which I do like a lot. So, this is not toolless. No. 
But if you are using those, those for oh, yes. paintballs, get these emag screens. Replacement emag screens, if you go on, on, on the Dynamorn's Facebook page, that's one thing you'll learn very quickly is is DMAG replacement springs. And the stock springs work great for first strike rounds, but when it comes to paint, the spring tension is just too high. Uh, it beats faster than a rotor. Yeah, <laughs> and there's a reason for that. doing overall impression and are just things that I would like to see. It does come with. Uh, Angle grip, not this one. This is the Magpul AFG2. I just kind of wanted a more realistic looking marker, so I swapped that out. But the diangle foregrip that it comes with is really comfy still. I, I just found that this kind of brings your arm out more. That you kind of see now, which I like personally. But that's we're not talking about that right now, so. Uh, overall, I would say that the dam is not best at any given thing, as it is designed to be kind of an all-round platform. So as a result, it's best at doing everything, but not one. It will not excel at one particular thing, or or there will be like a SAR will be a better sniper platform, or just because the dam is made to do other stuff, but you can still do it. So, uh, also a thing to note, if you get the die cam, and since the die cam is the only one that's hydro dipped, what I think a lot of people have found is that the hydro dip on it isn't that good. Uh, it's good. It, yeah, it's not quite as good as it could be. It's simply because they're taking uh, previously an old marker, whether it's it's black, like OD or dark earth, and they're adding a hydro dip job to it. What they're doing in bulk, which does affect the overall results, so they're trying to just do it all fast. So, yeah, uh, there are spots where you can see that the paints kind of come off on my marker already. Uh, it works really yeah, that ports on the ultra barrel have really bubbled out and cracked and paint. And so you just have to kind of clean paint off right away if you can. Yeah. But it is what it is. Which you haven't yet. So I kind of got some. I'll do better later on, but oh well. So as Stryker Tactical was saying, it, this R12 is a more sniper platform. It is phenomenal at that job. It is a, I use it as my snipe rifle slash more of a marksman rifle. And so far, if you're going, yeah, so far if you're debating between first strike rounds or paintballs, use a first strike round. And the it's designed for first strike rounds. Incredibly accurate. So far, the longest confirmed kill that I have with this is 80 yards, and there's lots of others that have gone farther than that. Yeah. And that was my first time in-game with it. Other than that, I love the gun, I love the optic they send with it. If for, for me, this with the XP-30, you can get the XP-1 as well, or none. And, as I said, you can get semi-auto. If you do get the semi-auto, it is easy to change also. You just install it as you'll see in the two pins is that you'll see in maintenance. Then you just take these little ports here. There's a black piece on you're not gonna be able to see inside it. But you just twist that down, I believe it is. And you're in semi auto mode mode. Which makes it really a versatile if you have both. But you're switching to one or the other, really. Yeah. Yeah. So far, no gripes to it. I love the product. Just be prepared for a weight there. Handmade. Well, hand assembled. And just built as you order. So, 
could be looking at 12 weeks, you could be looking at longer. Okay. He had a really, really long. <laughs> so I had a few issues. So I don't really want to say how long I was waiting. But yeah, I, I got know. it. And I'm so far happy with it. Other than we have a few issues to work out yet. But that's not the gun's fault. That's probably more my luck and me. Other than that, love the product. Same answer, and I'm looking forward to using this in the future. So, guys, stay tuned for part two. It'll be on Strike Tactical. We'll put a how you spell it. He spells it a little weird up here, or maybe it'll just take up the whole screen down here. Maybe in the description. No, it'll be in the video somewhere. Maybe out up here. Yeah, off screen. Why? I'll edit it so it gets in there. <laughs> there so, oh well, yeah. It, this is Strike Tactical. <laughs> Red Twin. Signing off. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I have no idea.